Hello, my name is George. I am a backend engineer on import team here at GitLab, and uh, I will be going through group import export functionality and demo. So I will be talking about what is group import export, uh, going through available uh, API endpoints and doing the demonstration. Uh, so what is group import export? It is uh, very similar to project import export functionality that we currently have, which allows you to uh, migrate projects from uh, one place to a new destination between, let's say, GitLab uh, instances or between uh, different groups. Uh, but this particular functionality uh, is targeting groups uh, related uh, information and relations. So uh, it exports and imports the following uh, relations, which are epics, milestones, labels, badges, members, uh, as well as all the subgroups uh, that are included in the, in the group you're exporting. And each subgroup includes all of, all of the information um, above here. Uh, so it allows, uh, it basically tries to solve the problem of um, migrating project import export, uh, uh, migrating projects. But uh, if, if you need some of the group uh, level information, then um, this functionality is trying to link two together. So for example, if you have a project issue uh, that is referencing a group epic, uh, group import export should be able to to do that. Uh, similarly to group labels, if you have group labels on on the issue or merge request, uh, that is going to be linked together as well, uh, as well as uh, all all the other group uh, relations like milestone and uh, etc. Um, note that group import export does not include projects in, in the export. So you still need to use project import export functionality uh, in order to import projects. Uh, so the ideal scenario of um, a migration would be uh, to export group, function, uh, group structure first and then import it at the new destination and then uh, export and import projects one by one. And if uh, done a few changes, to project import export to allow uh, group related information to be uh, linked with project relations. Uh, and I'll, I will show a demo uh, uh, in a moment here uh, so that it's more clear what I'm talking about. Uh, in terms of API endpoints, uh, there are uh, three endpoints that are very basic. So the first is Let's go through export, scheduling new export is a post request to an export endpoint uh, providing the ID of the group. Um, once the export is completed, uh, you can download it, which is a get request uh, to slash export slash download, uh, which is uh, going to return you an archive uh, similar to project import export, uh, an archive containing group uh, JSON file. In terms of import, there is a, an API endpoint post uh, to groups slash import. And uh, it allows, the, there are a few parameters that can be passed in and some of them are required. Uh, so for example, uh, you have name path, the file to, to be uploaded and the optional parent ID. So that um, if you are importing a group into a, a group that can be achieved by, by this parameter as well. Uh, so uh, these API endpoints, specifically the import uh, API endpoint is not yet available because it's not merged, uh, but it should be merged uh, this week. Okay, so let's uh, do a quick demo. Um, I'm running GitLab locally and I have a, a pretty basic group structure uh, that has uh, the root group 
It also has two subgroups and uh, six projects. As you can see in, in this group structure, there are six epics. Uh, and some of the epics have emojis and comments. Then we have uh, milestones as well, just two of them. Uh, we have group labels, uh, two of those, and we have members, uh, five members. But this is the, actually, this is the subgroup uh, inside the group. So, so some of the members from the root group are being inherited to the subgroup. Uh, but anyway, uh, first thing that we need to do is we need to export uh, the group structure. And when you make the post request, I've prepared it beforehand. Uh, 85, 85. Yeah, so the, the request is going to be accepted and then it's going to be available to uh, download. And what we can do is we do export download and that is going to, to download the export file. After that, uh, we can perform the import of the group structure. I'm just going to quickly grab the archive name uh, for the import uh, for the import request. I'm going to paste that in. Mm, uh, you need to give it a name. Um, it can be the same as before if the original group does not exist. And you need to pass um, to provide a path as well. Um, so yeah, this looks good. Let's see. Okay, this is accepted. It's going to be picked up by the background worker, and um, and it's it's already done. So we have migrated the group structure again. Um, if you compare it to the original group, it contains projects, but the, this group import export functionality does not include projects, uh, but it still um, migrates all the group level data that I mentioned before. Uh, things like epics are still here. Um, the comments and emojis are still here. Um, milestones are still here. Uh, labels. So now what we can do, um, if, we, if let's say we have a project that references some of those uh, group level relations, uh, we can export that project and import it to the new group. And all of those um, relations should be restored. So for example, if we have an issue right here, and this issue is referencing um, a root group epic and root group milestone, as well as root group um, labels. This is the root epic, and this is the root milestone. We should be able to still reference that once we export this project and we import it back. So let's do that. I'm going to the general settings of the project and I'm going to export it. It should be fairly quick because the project is very small. Okay, so I'm gonna download it. I'm gonna grab the um, archive name for the network request. Uh, then, I also need to grab the uh, group ID of the new group, which is 96, in order for, for us to migrate it to the new group. I have the network request ready for that. So it is going to be 96, right? Yes. Okay. This looks good. Import. Okay. That job has been scheduled, but again, it should be quick. It should be done by now. 
and it is done my project so now we go to this project and we have still have four issues that's good we have the, the um, issue that we were looking before that and as you can see this is a, a new group structure and a new project we have the epic that is referencing the, this epic is a root group epic right uh, let me close these we have a milestone as well that is referencing the root group milestone and we also have some of some of the labels um, that are being referenced from from the root group and one thing to note is obviously it's, it, it doesn't apply to root group only any if you have a nested group structure then um, appropriate relations are going to be picked from different ancestor groups so if you have um, an issue or a merge request that references an epic from the root group then a milestone from a subgroup then labels from another subgroup uh, all of these um, relations should be uh, assigned correctly. So, yeah. And in order to migrate all the projects, you just uh, need to go through those projects and export them and import them into right destinations. Um, one thing to note, if those if those relations are not found, they are going to be created at the at the parent group level. So just where the project sits, it's going to create that relation. Let's say an epic wasn't found, you couldn't resolve it. Uh, we're going to create one instead. And the, uh, the same applies for different kinds uh, of relations that I mentioned before. Um, also, the group members. So here's the subgroup. I think we mentioned that there were five project members. Yes, there are five. And if we quickly compare with the original subgroup, there are also five and the usernames, usernames match as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.